Hey folks, it's Monday. It's 5.31 p.m. and it is 90 degrees outside, and I don't know how it can be so hot with it being so cloudy. It just means that it's muggy and steamy and sultry and in the soup and unpleasant. But that's okay, because we don't want to be outdoors anyway. Because not only is it Monday, it's a very special Monday. It is the Monday of the 1,000th episode. Yes, pulled out the original shirt. I was not the original owner. Here's the original slogan. Can you read it? There we go. Uncut, uncensored, and uncooked. I got this off eBay. I can't remember when. But it has that that odor of whatever they used to put these things, plastic on shirts in the 90s, when they've been sitting around in the closet for 20 years. Mmm, that's good stuff. But I had to wear it. We have to celebrate this great program, which means so much to all of us. Well, I don't know about you, but I will tell you once again the story. And those of you who've heard it before, I don't you know, internet radio or whatever, or from me, or in print, you can decide how much the story has changed over the years. But the story of how Ra came to define my life, not particularly, but it uh, has been very important to me. In 1992, when I worked in a computer lab at the University of California, Riverside, a noted institution of higher learning, which became even more noted on Friday because that serial killer dude, James Holmes, did his undergrad work there. You don't have to be crazy to go to UCR, but it doesn't hurt. Ah! Sit in a computer lab, nothing to do, on Usenet, and I made my first discovery that there was a professional wrestling forum on Usenet, rec.sport.pro-wrestling, RSPW. And in 1992, right after WrestleMania 8 is when I discovered it, and discovered that community, and did a lot of reading, but was afraid to contribute. I slowly got over my fear. And part of it was that there wasn't a lot of WWF talk on there, because being that using that was pretty much the destination of those in the higher learning crowd, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Japanese wrestling was really what people watched. And if you were watching that stuff on TV, you probably were watching NWA, because it was better, pure athleticism store, I don't know. It wasn't that, that goofy-ass WWF was the deal. Well, I liked the goofy-ass WWF. There were a couple other people who did, too. And we were talking along, you know, having our discussions, and part of what was on RSPW were show reports. They were great ways to initiate discussion. You wrote down what happened on the show, and then you talked about what you had just read about what was written about what happened on the show. I wanted to do that, and there happened to be a show that wasn't being covered, WWF-wise. There were two big weekend shows, Superstars and Challenge, and the show that I picked was the Monday show on USA, Primetime Wrestling. And it was really the best of both worlds because it usually played most of the significant matches from Superstars and Challenge, so if I wanted to talk about them, I had a vehicle where I could do that. And they also would include other matches, which were usually name versus lesser name matches, as opposed to name versus jobber matches. So there was some competitiveness even though ultimately you usually knew who was going to win most of the time anyway. But if you wanted to see, you know, Hercules take on Jim Powers, that was something you were likely to see on prime time. And then occasionally they would put in stuff that they had from MSG or whatnot. And so you'd also have uh, the good fortune to hear Sean Mooney and Lord Alfred Hayes calling matches instead of the Superstars or Challenge team. Anyway, that was my gig. So in September 92, I decided I would start doing that on a regular basis. And I would write uh, in longhand on a legal pad, and then later type it up. And then using my 1200 baud modem, or was it 2400 at that time, upload the text, and then read the text of other people. 
and get responses from other people, and we would argue, and I would talk about how great WWF was, and everyone would be angry because it wasn't NWA or Japanese wrestling, and why did I care so much about story when I should have been caring about work rate? Anyway, flash forward to January, primetime wrestling was going to be canceled. Well, not canceled. I don't know. Disappeared. But replaced with this new show, Raw, which was going to be live occasionally. Usually they would go once a month, and they'd do three or four weeks at a time. And because I was doing primetime, I just, natural segue, I started doing Raw. And my streak ended at two shows. I missed the third show because I went back up home to watch the Royal Rumble at the Arco Arena in 93. And the next night, Raw number three I missed, which is too bad because it was the infamous Mr. Perfect Ric Flair loser leaves town match. But just as well because it's fun to watch and then not be writing out on the long hand every move of the match. But it was actually show number two when I was like, man, this is different and exciting. And it opened with Vince and Macho Man and Rob Bartlett standing there yakking. But from out of nowhere, Macho Man was bowled over by Repo Man, who repossessed his hat. And the whole time it was going on, that siren was still going on in the background, and everybody was cheering like crazy, and there was the excitement. And it was just, it just felt like wrestling television that we just didn't have. And it was very exciting, and it was infectious. And I stuck with it. And I did it through, I did it for about two years. September 94 is when I stopped. But between that, it's now 5.38 p.m. Between the devoted following I, felt I, I built on Usenet, along with some long conversations with Rick Skaya at the Rexport Pro Wrestling Convention, 1995, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, ECW, a whole other story. But when Rick finally decided that he was going to expand his own news from Dayton into a professional wrestling site, with Mike Samuda from uh, Mikasa Wrestling. When they came together and they started WrestleMania X in 1998, Rick emailed me and said, hey, how would you like to be the Raw recapper? And I don't have, I'd have to go back and look at the original emails. I don't remember if it was, will you do Raw and Nitro? I think that was probably Rick. I don't think I would have volunteered it. But I said yes. And so from there, April 1998, right after WrestleMania 14, where I started my, my big streak where I got really famous. And I would love to think that those of us getting in on the ground floor of professional wrestling on the internet, as we got popular, somehow that correlated with pro wrestling on TV getting popular. I can't prove that, of course. I would love to say we had a part of it. But I do think we helped reinforce to people who were on the internet, hey, there are people like me, and they enjoy this too, and we love talking about it. And in the process... Uh, I got a very nice girl to start emailing me. It was actually the Nitro report that she liked the most, but we'll pretend that Raw had something to do with it. Without Raw, there wouldn't have been a Nitro report. And that grew into a friendship. That grew into a long-distance relationship. And that grew into me bringing her out to my house and popping the question to her and marrying her and us ending up in Minneapolis somehow. So that's what Raw means to me writing well enough and long enough to get one girl interested in me and then uh, making sure that I married her. That may be an oversimplification, but it's still true. And that's pretty much what Raw means to me. We're on episode 1000. I went back and checked. I did about 320 of those shows. I'd love to say it was 316. It didn't turn out that way. But for everyone who's read it, for everyone who knows who CRZ is because of recapping, and it all started with Raw. I mean, there were five or six other shows, but it all started with Raw. That has been an enormous part of my life, an enormous amount of wasted time. No, I believe time well spent, and I will spend another three hours on it tonight and next week and probably for the foreseeable future. And I do invite you to join me on Twitter uh, at the w.com the dash w.com my message board our message board mostly me and let's use pro wrestling to get to know each other better why not that's my 10 minutes but I do hope that you're with me tonight on Twitter uh, if not that you're on the W afterwards so we can all talk about it 
just like we used to. I am CRZ, and I will be back tomorrow to probably not talk about wrestling at all. But you never know. We'll see. Thanks for watching.